Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the details of a uh, recent paper. Primarily, I'll be talking about the details of a recent paper called Amplified Rosby Waves Enhance the Risk of Concurrent Heat Waves in Major Red Basket Regions. So, essentially, um, a Michael Mann paper talked about quasi-resonant um, amplification. So basically the Rosby waves, you get a high-low, 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 and depending on the number of high-lows around the planet, you can get a locking. Uh, so you can get a quasi-persistent um, situation where there's a ridge over parts of, say, North America, parts of Europe, parts of Asia, and under those high pressure ridges, you get you get heat waves and uh, very, very little rainfall. So what this paper shows that I'll be discussing is you can get these waves block kind of kind of getting stuck because they reach a resonant with the resonance with the earth. So you get simultaneous heat waves over very prolific crop growing regions in North America simultaneously with the ridge over Europe over those crop growing regions simultaneously with the ridge over Asia over those crop growing regions so you can get a cut a hit to yields to crop yields and uh, this can lead to um, global food shortages so this is a very severe um, consequence of abrupt climate change and uh, also as climate change proceeds the regions under these ridges actually increases so the the nature of the wave shape changes so the ridges can be much more instead of just being like a sine wave you can get very elongated ridges which extend far north and cover a large region and I'll talk about a bit about another paper where the area under the ridges um, is proportional to the width of the jet stream and also to the um, basically to the wavelength of the jet stream and uh, how under climate change those things are are um, causing an increase in the regions underneath the ridges so the area this is very bad news, of course, because more of the crop growing region would be subject to um, extreme temperatures and lack of rainfall and uh, will therefore take a bigger yield hit in, um, in, in terms of agricultural uh, you know, crop, crop production. So, so we have some very severe uh, threats that face us in the near term future. So let's get into the details. And I talked a little bit about this in my um, in my in my um, video when I was out on the road um, at the side of the highway in a torrential uh, rainstorm so this is a paper uh, amplified Rosby waves enhance risk of concurrent heat waves in major breadbasket regions but first of all um, first of all I just want to bring up a couple things okay so this was my this is my blog, uh, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, so global food supply at risk from simultaneous crop losses due to specific jet stream patterns due to specific modal patterns, namely five and seven. So when there's when there's high low, high low, high low, high low, high low around the planet, that's five waves, and then the seven wave case, and those are the cases that are. The worst so this is a video where i was along the uh, road if you haven't seen this video i highly recommend it it's it's, it's very good um, and of course i've been tweeting it out and uh, the blog and also uh, putting it on facebook and twitter and uh, this is a video here and uh, i was interviewed on ctv news yesterday um, and I don't have a link yet to the interview. If you just go uh, Google CTV News uh, Canada um, and look at the uh, yesterday's um, 
look look at uh, y yesterday. So July second, um, uh, six o'clock report. Um, it should be on there. Or eight, actually, the interview was at eight twenty uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But then it'll be on the, all the news reports after that. So. If I find it, I'll put a link um, in my video. But I was talking about the electronic waste uh, problem, how it's getting worse and worse, because there was a new UN report on uh, e-waste, uh, global e-waste 2020. OK, um, Earth Null School, uh, 250 millibar wind speed. You can see the jet streams here. So just to give you an idea, like here's a ridge and a trough. There's a small ridge and another trough. Um, that's two patterns. Um, trough here, maybe slight ridge. It's hard to tell here. It's so distorted. But trough here, maybe slight ridge. Trough here, slight ridge. Trough here, definitely a ridge here and a trough here. So if you count the recurring patterns around the globe, you can get an idea for the wave number, OK? The number of wavelengths that are circumventing the globe. It's hard to see here because it's so distorted. And also, I just wanted to emphasize here as well, if you look at the temperature at the surface, um, this is over the Arctic right now. So these gr anything green is above zero. And we're, we're continuing an ongoing heat wave in Siberia. And you can cycle back in days and see how things have changed. But, and then you can associate. But whenever you have heat like this going up into the Arctic, there'll be definitely be a strong ridge here in the jet stream, allowing heat to go from lower latitudes up into this region. You know, it'll be a trough here, and so on. OK, so you can correlate the ridges and troughs with where the heat appears. OK, so let's go to the uh, papers, the specific papers. So uh, this was recently published. and. Basically, in a, you know, in an interconnected world, we can get simultaneous extreme weather events in distant regions that give a high-end risk for societies. Okay, so when we get a ridge over North America and a ridge over Europe and a ridge over Asia, they are connected, right? They're connected because they're all part of the same meand strongly meandering jet stream Rossby wave. So they can cause simultaneous heat waves and floods across the northern hemisphere. You get the simultaneous heat waves and droughts under the ridges, and you get the simultaneous floods, torrential rain with floods in the troughs of these. OK, so this paper shows that Rossby waves with wave numbers 5 and 7 have a preferred phase position and constitute recurrent atmospheric circulation patterns in the summer. So we can get simultaneous heat waves in, say, Central North America, Eastern Europe, and Eastern Asia for wave number wave five. And when we get a locking of wave seven, it's Western Central North America, Western Europe, and Western Asia. The probability of simultaneous heat extremes in those regions, those three regions simultaneously, increases by a factor of up to 20 for the most severe heat event. So the probability of these waves getting stuck in this pattern um, is increasing. And when they do happen, then we can get these severe heat events. Um, when, when there's two or more weeks per summer spent in either the wave five or wave seven regime, there's 4% reductions in crop production when it's averaged across the three affected regions, regional decreases of up to 11%. So, we have a potential for multiple harvest failures simultaneously and therefore grave risks to global food security. OK, so let's have a look at the uh, look. Let's have a look at the results of this paper. So this is the phase of the wave, if you like, and it's relative to, I think, the 180 degree um, longitude uh, line. And what you can see is that there's a sharp peak here with wave five and an even sharper peak with wave seven. The phase is different relative to the, uh, the, 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 relative to the 180 degree uh, longitude line, but you get an extremely sharp spike. So you get a phase locking in this situation and uh, also in this situation. So this is wave seven and wave five, but wave six and wave eight, it's more of a broader distribution 
Um, so, you know, you can still get multiple failures of crops in those regions, but it's not as easy to, uh, it, it's not as easy to characterize because the peaks are not as sharp. Okay, so um, this is uh, what we mean by wave five. So this is the wind velocity, um, and we have wind velocity, um, so we have positive numbers, negative numbers here, so the winds are going down here, up here, down here, up here. So this is because of the waves. Um, this is at the different latitudes, and you can count them. So one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five cycles. So that's why it's wave five. And here you get one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five cycles, six cycles, seven cycles. So that's wave, wave seven. So you can get it in terms of the wind velocities and also in, this is in the surface uh, um, air temperature um, anomalies, okay, so, ver so hot anomalies, cold anomalies, and you can see that, um, you know, the coinciding with the, so this would be a ridge and a trough and a ridge and a trough and a ridge and a trough, ridge and trough, ridge and trough, or high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, etc for waves five and seven, okay? So that's what we mean. So when those patterns are existing, um, circumventing the earth, then watch out in terms of crop growth in the summer. Okay, now, you, now, now in terms of the coincidence, um, this is, I, I'm gonna talk about some of the key points here. So this is wave five, the co this is the coincidence rate. So in other words, if you get a ridge here, a ridge over this region, a ridge over this region, then, um, then the, if they all happen simultaneous, three ridge, a ridge here, a ridge here, a ridge here at the same time, then the coincidence is very high, it's one. Okay, so there's all of these different um, cases. So this is looking at, at, at this region by itself. So it's looking at coincidences with, this is the temperature anomaly, and this is the, uh, the probability, if you like, the spatial coverage, um, you know, one would be full coverage, this would be less coverage down here, the fraction of coverage of that particular region. Um, and these are the coincidences. So when you get, uh, so basically, um, if, you get a, if you get both Central North America, um, Central North America and Europe um, coinciding, that would be in situation, uh, so here is situation E, Central North America and Europe. This would be a ridge both in North America and in Europe, and the probabilities, the coincidences, and this is uh, North America and Asia coincidences, and this is Europe and Asia coincidences, and this is all three of them. So this is the case here. This is temperature anomaly that we see um, in different situations. Um, you know, when we see a ridge in those three crop growing, growing regions and we get the coincidences here. So this is also done with, uh, with the wave seven region and the coincidences are extremely strong. Okay, so the bright red here, or dark, darkest red is, are these ones here. So we get coincidences of, of, of the, the occurrences of this ridges in those three regions. Okay. Um, so basically, this is the key thing. Here is the mean crop production, um, and this is for um, this is in the major. This is for the major commodity crops. So maize, uh, which is corn basically, wheat, soybeans, and rice converted to kilocalories. Okay, so energy from the crops for our food. This is a major bread basket in Central North America. Uh, Western and Eastern Europe, and also in uh, Asia, okay? And what we see here is when, when, when there's a wave five locking, there's a strong ridge in the, these, this dark red region here, or brown region here and here, and that, that covers, that goes over crop growing regions here, here, and not misses, misses here. And this is wave seven here, okay, is the red. It covers this region here, there's, there would be a ridge, there'd be a ridge here, and there would be a ridge here. So there would be crop failures in, in those regions, okay? So when we get these um, quasi-resonant wave patterns, 
then they coincide with crop going regions and there's a there's huge heat wave and drought in those regions and therefore crop yields drop. I'll continue. Thanks.